In this tutorial, you'll discover how to color gray hair using Lightroom or Photoshop. Now, this is a really quick and easy technique. And also with the Photoshop version, I have created a free action for you to download and use. So let's dive straight in. Okay, to reduce the appearance of gray hair in Lightroom, what the setting that I like to use is the adjustment brush. So that's in the develop module. It's this little icon here. It looks like a brush. So click on that. And basically this allows you to selectively adjust a certain area. So to start with, what I'm going to do is drop the exposure down to 1.5, drop the shadows down a titch and drop the blacks. Now, the beauty of this technique is as you start to apply the adjustment, if it doesn't look right, you can um, scale it back or increase it where you need to. Now, this is just for uh, to darken those gray hairs there. So if I start at the part here, you can see that that is starting to uh, minimize the appearance of the grays. But what you'll also notice, if I come in a little bit tighter here, is that the color isn't quite the same. So all I'm doing is darkening that area, but I'm missing out on the actual color there. So what I want to do is just warm up the tone so that it looks similar. And I'll just show you in an overlay and let me just zoom back about. So that's where I've applied the, the adjustment brush there. So what I'm doing is adding a little bit of warmth and just a titch of magenta because it's sort of a, uh, a ready tone to the hair. And you can see that already that's, uh, that's making quite a difference there. So you can see that uh, using this technique, you can quickly and easily minimize the appearance of grays in Lightroom. All right, now the other settings in the brush settings what I like to, to have is a, a really soft brush. So I like to have a 100% feather on my brush. So let me, so if I hover the brush there, you can see that it's got that uh, central uh, circle there and the outer circle shows you the amount of feather. So I've got a nice soft brush, so you're not gonna see any hard edges. I have my flow at 50 and I've got my density at 100. So um, basically setting the flow at 50 means that I can um, increase the uh, impact of the adjustment brush in layers. All right, so um, let me show you what I mean by that now. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the adjustment brush and how you can change the settings. So you can use uh, your scroll wheel to increase or decrease the size of your brush. You can also use the slider here on the side in the brush tab, or you can use your bracket key to increase and decrease the size of your brush. Now, the settings on the brush, you'll notice uh, here that I've got a central uh, brush circle and then there's an outer circle. So the outer circle shows you how much of a feather that you've applied to the brush. Now the feather is how soft or hard the edge is going to be. So if I take my brush and I reduce the feather to zero, you can see that I no longer have that outer uh, um, circle there. And if I was to apply a, uh, a setting to my brush, I'm going to just apply color so that you can see the difference. With zero feather, you can see that I've got a hard edge, all right? If I was to apply 100% feather, you can see that I've got a lovely soft edge. So 
for all the different applications, you can either have a softer brush or a harder brush. So that's the feather. Now, what about flow and density? Now, how I like to work is to have my density up to 100% and I keep my flow at around 50. And the reason for this is if I wanted to apply this red color to my uh, image, and uh, let me just bring the feather down to zero so you can see exactly what's going on. If I was uh, with the flow set to 50, basically what I can do is I can keep going over that area and eventually it, it, it'll build up to, to the maximum density of that color. So what it means is when you're working on an image, you can um, build up the impact of that image. So I can just go uh, lightly or just keep going and building and building and building. Now, if I was to bring my density down to 50 and my flow to 100, what happens is I can not no longer build up the color. The density is capped at 50%. So it's only giving me half strength. I can't build up my settings. So that's why I like to keep the uh, density high and the flow at half. And then you can build, build up your settings. You've got more control that way. Okay, so once the color's nicely corrected, I can just build that uh, color there over the hair. And it's pretty simple, quick and easy way to just minimize the appearance of grays. Now there's going to be a few little flyaways that you can see there. Um, it's not perfect, but you can see that it does make a huge difference uh, to the appearance of the gray and you can just go over and it's mostly at the top here the ends look fine and then basically what you can do is just uh, tweak the warmth and the magenta there just to get that tone right and then you can also uh, adjust the exposure so how dark or light you want it to be so I think I've got it pretty right there, but just tweak those settings. You don't want it to look uh, too heavy and too fake, but I find that that setting works quite well and there's a huge difference there. Again, it's something that you don't want to be too heavy handed with, uh, but just a, a light setting there and that looks quite good. Now, uh, there is a better way and I believe that that is using Photoshop. So let's have a look at how to do that now. Okay, to reduce the appearance of grey hair in an image using Photoshop, here's what you do. All right, so I've got my image open in Photoshop and you need to make sure uh, if you're going to use the action the gray away action that I've provided you with, you need to ensure that you're working on the original layer. So you want to do your gray edit before you do anything else. Otherwise the action isn't going to work. So I've opened my image. I go to my actions panel and uh, assuming you've already loaded up your Photoshop action and there are tutorials on how to do that if you're not sure, but basically select the gray away, gray hair away action, hit play. And if I open my layers panel there, there's my original file and here are these three new layers. Now, Select the hair color layer. So that's the first layer. We're going to be working on this layer. You want to have a brush selected. Make sure you've got zero hardness. Blend mode is normal. Opacity 100%. And we're going to drop our flow down to 15%. Okay. Now, with the brush selected, 
What I want you to do is select uh, an area of hair next to the gray hairs. Uh, so what I'm doing is as I'm selecting that area, I've got the option key on a Mac, Alt on a Windows selected. And if you hover over that area, you can see now that I've got that eyedropper selected. And so I'm going to select an area of brown hair and you'll see let me just reset this for you. You'll see that once I click on that, so I've got the option key on a Mac, Alt on a Windows selected, you've got the picker, click on that, and the foreground color will change to the same color there. So that's the color that I'm painting with. And all you need to do is just reduce the brush size a little bit, is brush over those areas. So I'm actually painting color over those areas. And what you'll also notice happens is as I paint the color, you'll notice that I'm still maintaining the texture of the hair. So I'm not losing any of that texture. And that's this little layer that I've created here. The sharpen layer allows that to happen. So it's just the way that I've configured this action it means that you can brush the color over the gray without losing uh, the texture of your hair. So what I suggest you do to get a really realistic look is it's like if you look at hair It's not just one color. It's lots of different colors. So you can see with this um, Image here. I've got tones of red. I've got lighter areas and darker areas So to, to make it more realistic what you want to do occasionally is maybe lighten the color that you've chosen and then go ahead and keep brushing over the areas. Okay, so I'm choosing a lighter area for these. And I'm just also, as I'm brushing on, I'm following the line of the hair. Okay, and now I'm going to come in here and choose a lighter color just to blend in with those areas here and brush over the different areas of gray. All right, now here at the temples, I'm going to actually go with a darker shade. So again, holding down the option on a Mac, Alt on a Windows, and brushing over those darker areas. And also the part, I'm going to make that a bit darker just so that's uh, quite realistic. All right, and... But just the important thing to remember is that you're continuing to change that the color of the hair as you go along so that you're not getting one solid color which kind of looks a bit wrong town okay and once you're happy with that there will be areas little areas of white that will just uh, stay but that that sort of keeps that n natural look to the hair and to get that area there at the back all right so once i'm happy with that so that's the hair overlay you can see the before and after what i'm going to do is just drop the opacity a teach so it doesn't look too uh, fake there and the final thing that i'm going to do and if you want to refine this selection and just work a bit faster, what you can do is actually, once you've covered all the areas there, okay, and you want to come back and refine that, what you can do is add a layer mask, invert it. So that's basically I've just hidden what I've done. And then I can come back with a white brush and carefully apply that color just reveal what I've just done if if you want to be like just say you're doing someone's beard or um, the, the image is a lot sharper and like you've got the background as well and you don't want to uh, make a mistake and you want to be uh, fine-tune the image then coming back with the layer mask is a good idea it just means you can just take your time and get that that blend looking good all right so i'm happy with that but one thing that's happened is now that i've added the color over the top of 
the original hair color, it kind of looks a little bit flat. So what I want to do is add some hair shine. So if I come up to the top layer here, select this layer here, it's an actual layer mask. So what I can do is I've got my brush selected, uh, nice soft brush, so zero hardness, blend mode normal, opacity 100%, Again, my flow, I'm going to keep it at 15%. Select my brush, and what I'm going to do is just uh, dab some shine onto the hair, just to give it a little bit of uh, the shine back in the hair, because where I've painted the color back on it's made the hair look really dull so you can see now that I've added some shine to the hair all right so you can just adjust that and if you think you've gone too far you can come back where you think you've made some mistakes and just brush with black and if you want to just reduce the opacity but I think that just gives it a lift all right so we've gone from before to after that's without the shine so first of all we've added the color and then the highlights there and you get something that looks fairly realistic there so that's how you remove gray or the appearance of gray hair using photoshop